At a coastal property on the South Australian York Peninsula sits a reminder of the devastating impact of the 2019-2020 summer bushfires. On the 20th of November, a fire started near Yorktown, which is sort of about 20 kilometres from here. And um, it was a terrible day. It's one of those days the CFS rates is catastrophic. Got a phone call from a mum who lives in town and all she had to say was, there's a fire. And I knew what was going on. We lost this whole farm that we're standing on, over 400 hectares of crop. I can't remember the exact number. I guess the immediate impact is the sense of disappointment and loss. Not long afterwards, Jason attended a community meeting for local farmers affected by the fire, where a researcher put out the call for access to burnt cropping paddocks to help fill the knowledge gap on insect activity after a fire event. I just thought that sounded tremendous and the opportunities that don't present um, very often from a research perspective and I thought well if we can help we may as well and we'll learn something along the way and uh, hopefully it'll be some benefit to someone. That researcher was Julianne Farrell from the local research organisation Ag Extra. After the bushfires her team started trapping and monitoring invertebrate pests as part of a wider GRDC investment on post-fire pest and disease management. We've learnt a lot about how the bushfires affected the diversity and the populations of the insects and how they've recolonised areas over time, particularly with the winter crops going in. So this is all really useful information for, for growers in the future to manage their farms on an ongoing basis and also know, to know what to expect after another fire goes through. She's been sampling properties across South Australia's fire-affected cropping regions. Jason's property is one of four on York Peninsula and there are three more on Kangaroo Island. For this project, we're using pitfall and sticky traps to collect a range of insects. The pitfalls are designed for the ground-dwelling insects that get along the soil surface or, or along the plants. And the sticky traps are designed for catching the, the aerial insects, anything that's flying. So uh, that's giving us a good range of, um, of insects within the crop or, or passing over the crop. Once a month, the traps are emptied or replaced, with the samples carefully packed up and taken back to the lab to be identified and recorded. Two days work, pitfall catch. We started out through the summer and autumn with a lot of millipedes and um, Egyptian beetles. And as the winter crops have developed, we've been catching a lot more aphids and uh, red-legged earth mites and other mites. While it's proof these pest species have bounced back, Julianne reckons it's far from a doom and gloom situation. The most surprising aspect that I've seen so far is the number of beneficials in the environment. Quite a few honeybees, uh, Apis uh, mellifera, and parasitic wasps, tiny micro wasps that uh, can be difficult to identify, but they've often got really interesting features like beaded antennae or multi-filament antennae on some of the males, which are uh, a distinctive identification aspect. And we've occasionally seen native bees, which is really promising in an area like this, which doesn't have very much uh, to attract native bees. And lots of ants. Uh, so they're also a good environmental indicators. Also, we're seeing a lot of calimbola or springtails. It's the black mass. There's thousands of them there, uncountable virtually. Which are also indicators of a, a stressed environmental system, which you often find in, in monocultures where there's not a lot of uh, plant variety. The high number of beneficials is a positive sign and an indication that chemical control may not be warranted after a fire event. For Jason, it's been welcome news as he recovers and rebuilds his farming operation. From a personal perspective, it's been, it's been excellent just being able to chat with Julianne and, and go, ah, oh, okay, good, yeah, well, I didn't realise that would be going on, and getting some positive news and, and being able to make informed decisions uh, rather than just a throw everything at it approach. And that's exactly what this research is focused on. With climate change increasing the severity and frequency of extreme weather, 
This new insight will help Australian growers make informed decisions in difficult times to come. It's uh, gone beyond my initial expectations. I wasn't expecting anywhere near the variety and the diversity of the insects that we've managed to find so far. And uh, you know, every few days I'm, I'm finding something different that I haven't seen in the traps before. Conical snails, uh, yeah, yeah, conical snails there. White Italian snail, it's a califera auger, blowfly. So it's been a really interesting experience to, to spend days crouched over the microscope looking at these traps and, and trying to sort out bits of insect parts and, and what they might belong to. The, the growers here should be, have a lot of confidence in, in the, uh, the landscape, I think even post bushfires, because it seemed to be quite resilient. The, the crops are doing well, even in the burnt areas. There's a lot of insect activity. There's a lot of beneficials there, uh, which are uh, you know, the farmer's friends. And that's really interesting to know, and uh, it certainly, certainly helps the growers too, because they don't need to worry so much about uh, applications of insecticides. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.